All right, up till now, um, I've been bringing up names of some different organisms, and uh, we should go over uh, how organisms are given their names a little bit and how that uh, affects uh, how we see them and their relationships to one another. Okay. So first we'll talk about just nomenclature in general and, and the assignment of names. So we have a system called binomial nomenclature. So binomial meaning two names, uh, and there's going to be a lot of other parts of the classification system, but every organism uh, is typically assigned a genus and a species. Now certain things become fairly important in terms of rules uh, regarding them, and that is that the, the genus must be capitalized and the species must be lowercase. If you capitalize species, it's not a species. If you put genus and then the next word is capitalized, that would be a subgenus, not a species. Uh, and if you have this as a lowercase, then it's not a genus. Then it's a species or a superspecies, but it's not genus. So that seems like you can be uh, variable with that or careless with it, but you can't because there are very specific rules. And this one, the ones that's most commonly broken is the capitalization of the species just because um, a computer program wants you to do it or it just looks better this way, but it's just it's wrong to do and you have to uh, have the species lowercase. So this binom binomial nomenclature um, was developed by uh, Linnaeus who started naming organisms and, and kind of putting them into groups based on relationships. Um, now he didn't really think about evolutionary relationships, he was just more looking at just how he could categorize them right, as an organizer. Uh, and so uh, what it turns out though is that because of the way that they were named and the way that they were organized, we often then start to see relationships between groups of organisms that have the same genus, for example, because they look a lot alike, but they have certain differences which then puts them into different species. Now, traditionally, this was all done morphologically. So that term morphology. It's based on structure. And you have to remember, structures are formed because of the genetic material that directs their formation. But uh, there can be underlying genetic differences between organisms and no structural differences or very little or things that we can't actually see. So we have uh, morphology is sort of the, the history. You know, if we look at structures of organisms and today we kind of look at the molecular. So we're looking at more often things like DNA sequencing to assign organisms to groups and categorize them and look at relationships. Keep also in mind, one of the problems with that uh, is that we don't typically look at an entire genome of, an, of a whole organism and compare that to an entire genome of another organism. We pick specific genes and just compare the sequences of those genes. And over time, historically, people have found certain genes that they used for classification to be poor indicators of relationships and then selected different genes and sometimes found, oh, the first classification wasn't very good or maybe it didn't really matter, but this is the type of thing that continues to change you know, as well. All right. So memorizing sometimes names of organisms, the thing is they change uh, over time as people have come up with new ways of categorizing it. But everything is gonna have a genus and a species name, there can also be super and sub, so super genus, sub genus, super species, subspecies, so whole, whole expansion of this, but we're going over just the basics of how they're organized. So that's the first part of it. Now, but that's kind of the lowest end, right, of it. So at the bottom end, you know, we have sort of uh, species name, uh, and then above that, the genus. And so I'll give you an example with an organism that is a uh, sea star uh, named Astropectin. And its species is Articulatus. Now, in addition to that, genus and species names are Latin. And one of the ways that they're designated as the names and as the genus and species names is that they are either underlined or put into italics. Uh, 
Uh, again, if it's not underlined or in italics, then it's probably not the genus or species name, it's something else. So it also need, it should be indicated in, in that way. Now, above this, there are many other tiers of organization. So if we go you know, all the way to the top, you know, what do we have? We have our, our domains. So for this group, it's domain eukarya. Because they have eukaryotic cells. And then beyond that, then we have kingdoms. So we have within the eukarya, we have so kingdoms. Protista, fungi, plantae, and animalia. So proteins, the fungi, the plants, and the animals. So this is kingdom. It's a sea star. It's an animal. Below kingdoms, we then have a classification of phyla. And so if we look at sea stars, they belong to a group called spiny skinned you know, animals or echinoderms. And now that helps us again talk about relationships because now we're going to say that echinoderms and we'll get to this again once we cover diversity with echinoderms, have certain characteristics that other groups don't. Okay, Just like animals will have certain characteristics that plants don't or that fungi do not, but they'll have shared characteristics as well. And one of the things that we'll bring up, and I'll talk about this in a little bit, uh, are characteristics that are analogous to one another versus homologous to one another. And the, the meaning here is that analogous structures might look a lot alike, um, but that they don't necessarily share a common ancestry. So they have two different groups of organisms with a characteristic, and they look like the same characteristic, but they don't. For example, um, the proteists have multicellular organisms within the group called um, kelp, right? So they're a type of macroalgae, a large algae, and they have a structure called a holdfast that looks like a root structure of a plant, but it's not a root. So plants do have roots, and the algae, the kelp, have hold fast and they will they may look alike they're not the same structure at all so sometimes that morphology or what something looks like may not really be we have to look at the physiology of it or other sorts of characteristics homologous traits means they are related to one another so they may look alike and serve the same function or they could look very different um, but have some common feature somewhere within it that it makes them link together and again we'll spend more time on that but um, these organisms have to share some common features with one another. So typically they would have morphological features and today we would see them with genetic or molecular features. So we have domain, kingdom, phylum, and then we'd have beyond that classes of organisms. Uh, and so within the echinoderms, there are a number of different classes. Uh, this is in the class Asteroidea. So there are crinoids, these like feather stars, and ophiroids, uh, and the sea urchins, and echinoids, so different types of echinoderms at a higher level that's called a class level. Beyond class is order, and beyond order is family. These are two that are, are important. Uh, in the overall naming system and classification, but not used often uh, as often you know, as some of the others. Um, so for this, it's uh, Pexilocidae. Uh, and the Pexilocida, and then Astro, Astropectinidae. And there's some things like rules like this IDAE is typically uh, very common in family names. So the, sometimes uh, the way a name ends, some structure, some part of the name itself is common you know, for all different groups. And that's how we know it's a family level name versus another sort of level name. 
All right, so for a sea star called Astropectin articulatus, its genus and species, it actually has all these other levels of organization as well. Uh, so you should know, not necessarily, do not need to memorize this for this particular uh, organism here, but what you need to know are um, the levels of organization in order, you know, the domain is the highest, then kingdom, phylum, then class, then order, then family, then genus, then species. Rules about genus and species with binomial nomenclature, um, that they, the genus should be capitalized, this one should be lower, the species should be lowercase, um, keeping those things in mind. What, what are the different kingdoms of life? So we already have the domains, right? We had uh, the uh, bacteria, the true bacteria, and the archaea, which we'll again cover specifically or details in, in uh, diversity topics. Um, but And then we have the eukarya. So we have three domains, and then within the eukarya domain, which is where we'll spend a lot of time, uh, really more in our course, um, we have these four kingdoms. Right? And we'll be going over these different kingdoms, some, spending some more time on, on, on some than the other, probably a little more on probably animals than uh, the others. Um, but we'll be covering some characteristics of each of those. Uh, and then for some, then we'll dive in even further and cover some characteristics of some major groups within them, within some of the kingdoms, like some of the phyla uh, and so forth. But typically these uh, groups here are ones that we usually won't cover as much um, in this type of course, but you should be familiar with that organization.